um, when you help your company define problem. That's episode number one. Let's go to the next slide. Like this. Right, scenario. You have recently been joined this new company. Company's manager was very impressed with you during your job interview as he was not expecting young professional like you are not only aware of daily critical operational metrics like CSAT optimization, quality optimization, defect density reduction, incidents of volume reduction, yield optimization, processing time reductions, uh, uh, but you're also expertise to contribute in solving business problems associated with these key business metrics with advanced expertise of Six Sigma data analytics, lean agile digital process transformation and process predictions and optimization. That's delight for him and for his senior management. Uh, by the way, all these uh, metrics are, or these uh, you know, operational metrics are there into your internship project. So once you do your internship project, you will be in a position to solve similar sort of uh, problems. So you, you will be in a position to uh, to improve the performance of these metrics uh, for your organization. So don't worry right now. Hence, they hired you immediately. Why not? When your competitors were able contributor only in core task of, you know, if you get hired for manufacturing, right? So your core task is, you know, manufacturing, contributing manufacturing processes. If you hired for software testing, then you know, that's a software testing task you know, or a development task. Or, or, or if you uh, join a service industry, that's a service delivery task. That's a core task, right? So in your competitors were able um, contributors only in core task. You are not only able contributor in those core activities like others, but also help management to solve daily critical business problems with advanced analytical problem solving expertise, right? Hence, give me one logical reason why will they not hire you? So, you know, when your competitors are good in one task, you're good in that task, as well as you, you are helping your management to solve daily critical business problems with advanced analytical problem solving expertise. So why that company will not hire you? As simple as that. So within a week of your joining, I mean, you join that company. So within a week of your joining, as expected, your manager approached you with a problem and requested your expert support to solve that problem. Next slide, please. You will be leading the project uh, that is problem uh, solving Six Sigma project and also navigate his team through Six Sigma DMAC methodology. Manager assigned few senior team members to work under your expert leadership on this project and he will support and participate in the project deployment as a project owner. Now day one. You are in team meeting with manager, assistant manager, supervisors, and experienced teammates who are astonished to know about your advanced analytical problem solving skill sets and are eager to learn from you. Characters. So, you know, for every, you know, web series, we do have a characters, right? So likewise, our web series also do have a character. So character number one, you your future self, you know, down the line few months, you yourself down the line few months, right? So your future self, few months down the line, who have ex uh, successfully completed Breath of X Insight Fellowship Program with three globally accredited certificates and multiple internship projects in advanced problem solving expertise. You will lead and guide Six Sigma project implementation for the company you will join. That's the character number one, that is you yourself. Second and two more characters are operations manager, assistant operations manager, supervisor, operations team of senior members. So these are the other characters who are part of the Six Sigma project deployment. So there'll be discussions and dialogues between these characters, right? So let's go to next slide. So let's see how have you laid and guided 
six sigma project implementation successfully so how you carried it out in a future let's uh, let's look uh, into it right away so this is me next slide please all right so you so now you're going to start talking to them right so uh, this is what you're going to speak to them and that this will be the first uh, you know introductory discussion about six sigma from you uh in front of your team members that six sigma deployment team right so you're going to start now you hello friends i deeply appreciate you all for using uh for trusting me and allowing me um uh, an opportunity to deploy six sigma advanced analytical problem solving methodology with you all now let's deploy six sigma greenbelt project as we all know every company on this planet is heading towards unknown future you know how many of us were aware of uh, covid 19 five years back even two years back to be very honest or three years back almost no one similarly while heading towards unknown future every company is unaware of different problems they got to tackle day in day out continuously Fixing those problems and heading towards future is unavoidable part of any business. Imagine if on a weekly basis, the company A faced three to four problems, there will be at least three into 52, 52 weeks, right? So three problems per week into 52, roughly 150 problems a year need to be fixed. Each problem is a symptom and has certain causes behind it, as we all know, Y is equal to FX. Fixing those causes will reduce intensity of the problem. But imagine if each problem has three to four causes, on an annual basis, we have to fix 150, this number, 150 problems, <clears throat> into three causes per problem. 450 causes need to be fixed. And what if each cause has on an average two solutions to fix it? So there will be roughly 450 into, into two, that is 900 solutions to be deployed to fix all causes and thus all problems annually. To deploy 900 solutions per year will demand heavy investment in time, in money and in efforts. So imagine if company invest so much of time, money and efforts in resolving day-to-day -day business problems, how much time, money and efforts will the company left with to invest in core business functions of R&D, production, marketing and other functions? Next slide. If company does not invest enough in core functions, it will lose its competitiveness in cutthroat competition of the market and will be bankrupt. And if we will not resolve problems in early stage, it will be difficult to fix it later. And that also costs a fortune for companies. And not to mention, if those problems are associated with customer satisfaction and, and if we want to resolve it in time, you won't need any fortune teller to pay future of the company. Hmm? Hence, this is a billion dollar seesaw. Every company in this world need to balance. But wait, what if I don't need to deploy 900 solutions, fix 450 causes and handle 150 problems every single year? What if I need to just work on 35 to 45 key problems, 50 to 60, 50 to 60 different causes, and just 60 to 90 solutions? I can save lots of time, money, and efforts, which is almost 90% of it. Is it possible? Can you do it? Yes, it is very much possible. Six Sigma is the answer. The core functionality of Six Sigma is prioritization. That is sorting critical, most important problems, causes, and solutions based on statistical foundation in much lesser time, much lesser money, and much lesser efforts.
many of them globally presume that you cannot do Six Sigma project without already available data. Answer is a big no. One can deploy Six Sigma project even if you don't maintain any past or historical data. Yes, if you have past data, you have an advantage, but it is not mandatory. Please do remember. So that's a need. Secondly, many of them complains that Six Sigma um, project deployment takes five to six long months. We cannot spare that much of time. Again, big no, that's a big myth like the previous one. One can deploy Six Sigma project in as low as 2.5 months, out of which first 1.5 months is what you have to invest to fix the problem, the rest of one month is to sustain or stabilize the improvement. That is your control phase. And you can simultaneously work on four to five problems at a time. Hence, if we average out time consumption for each problem is less than two to three weeks. That's an average time for each problem. If you're going to work on four to five problems simultaneously, two to three weeks, that is nothing. And you can also leverage and scale up the lessons learned and benefits uh, from all these projects across different production lines, departments, or locations if those department, departments face the same problem or similar problems. And this is applicable to various industries like software development, banking, insurance, telecom, retail, IT services, and all other in industries, to be very honest, even agriculture industry as well. That's the power of analytical problem solving skills. <clears throat> These are highly accurate and highly scalable. Let's start with one of the, one of the most powerful analytical problem solving skill, uh, namely Six Sigma DMAC for a current project. Hmm? Sorry for a lengthy introduction. Are you bored with my introduction? Next slide. Operation manager. No, certainly not. <clears throat> this is incredible that at this young age, you know so much and you have expertise in the most important business skills of advanced analytical problem solving. We are honored to have you in our company. We look forward to learn from you. You, thank you, sir. Happy to hear that. Let's go through exciting journey of advanced analytical problem solving. <clears throat> Excuse me. First part is Six Sigma DMAC. Uh, D here is defined. A very first step of Six Sigma DMAC methodology is defined. And define, why we call it define? Because we are going to define the problem. So let's understand it in detail. So to start with, first of all, let's understand different types of problems we face. Are we maintaining any client complaint log, issue log, or do we have a client feedback, or do we maintain critical operational metrics like quality, yield, customer satisfaction, throughput time, and other metrics? All this will help us understand client issues or business related problems to be fixed. In case we have any specific problem to be resolved, we can take up that problem too. Or else I would request you to assess above discussed aspects always to pick a problem from for the project. Operations manager. Yes, we can definitely assess few of above areas in upcoming projects, but for time being, our management wants us to fix a specific problem. You? Sure, sir. Will you please share the problem with us? Operations manager. Okay. This is the problem, right? This is what the problem they have shared with us. We can just go through this problem. So they have shared the problem. So let's go to <clears throat> next slide. You. All right, we have to dig deeper by answering a few questions in case of given problem. Would you mind to answer them? Operations manager. Sure, please ask. You. Thank you, sir. Uh, we call it operational lever diagnostics. Lever means metric or measuring unit. So following are four questions. Question number one. Do we measure and maintain any metric related to this given problem? 
Second, if yes, how frequently you track the given metric per unit basis or hourly basis, shift wise basis, <clears throat> day wise basis, uh, week wise basis, um, likewise. In case that is third question, in case you are maintaining metric per unit wise basis, then what is the target per unit? If you are maintaining it shift wise basis, what is the target per shift? And likewise. Fourth question. And finally, in last 90 days, how many times we have missed the target for a given metric? Please spare next 30 minutes and answer these questions. So they spared the time for 30 minutes. And after 30 minutes, you are we done? Operations manager. Yes, you please share your answers. Right. So step one operational liver diagnostics. So few questions were asked to Miss uh, Rima Dayal, who is a senior program manager over there, right, in the retail business services account, uh, who was uh, present in the client virtual meeting. So you um, you want to ask this question to Miss Rima, you know, who is the uh, who's who, who is the boss of operations man, right? So hello, Miss Rima. So this is these are the questions which you asked to Miss Rima, and following are the answers which she gave to you, right? And of course, the operations manager was also present over there. So, hello, Ms. Rima. Are you maintaining any metric in case of severity ticket management? Now, this is the problem uh, they, they do have. Uh, answer, yes, like any IT operations, our team receives tickets with, segre uh, with segregation of severity one, severity two, and severity three. We track a number of severity tickets on a daily basis each month. Second question, which you asked, Miss Rima, how frequently you track severity tickets? But yes, as told on a daily basis each month, uh, we receive severity issue uh, that is ticket from client with severity rating one, two, or three. Client gave those ratings, so we track every ticket under under severity scanner. Excellent, Miss Rima. What is the target per day? There's no. As such a target, you know, it should be as low as possible, preferably zero, because we have to resolve every ticket in a stipulated time with priority for severity one and severity two. And this consumes efforts and time. And of course, it's really a, a cost for the operations. So ideally, uh, we are not supposed to have a single severity ticket. So that's an ideal thing. Then fourth question you're going to ask. In last 30 months, uh, sorry, in last uh, three months, that is 90 days, for how many days severity one and severity two tickets count is more than zero? Well, she answered, in last three months, we had 190 tickets received on an average two tickets per day, out of which 136 are severity one, severity two tickets, average of 1.51 tickets per day, that is 136 divided by uh, 90 days. So that would be 1.51 tickets per day. In last 90 days, there are 62 days when we received one or more severity one or severity two tickets. That is almost 68.89% days are severity non-compliance. So these are the answers given by Ms. Rima, who is the boss of your operations manager, right? And she's quite curious and quite happy to know that there is someone in the team like you, you know, who can help her solve her day-to-day -day operation problems. And she was quite impressed during the uh, during your job interview as well. We already, we already talked about this, right? So let's go to the next slide. So once uh, operational uh, labor diagnostics based uh, quantification of the problem is done where you ask two questions to senior management or senior manager where you got uh, you know good question good insightful inform uh, informative answers and uh, once that is done of course the very next step so you're going to continue now uh, great let's proceed to next step it is called developing project charter project charter is a kind of one page document that quantify the problem and set improvement goal. In simple words, it answers following questions in Greek. A, that is the first question, what is the impact of the problem? How much is the problem? What is an improvement goal? 
who are involved in a team to deploy Six Sigma project? What is the timeline for project completion? And finally, what is the estimated benefit of the project? If senior management want to know problem in brief, project charter is a guiding document. They can understand the problem with the help of project charter in less than a couple of minutes. So let's develop a project charter for our project in next 30 minutes. So in next 30 minutes, they, they have developed the project charter after 30 minutes. Next slide. And right, this is the project charter which they built. You know, we have a business case. Uh, well, I'm not going to read out uh, the case. Of course, you, the video is there with you. You can just uh, take a pause and read it out. Uh, but I'm going to read the rest of the things, right? Problem statement. In last three months, this is what, uh, you know, the senior manager also mentioned. We had 190 tickets received on an average two tickets per day, out of which 136 are severity one and severity two tickets average of 1.51 tickets per day. By the way, we're talking about problem statement, right? So we need to talk, we need to quantify the problem. In last 90 days, there are 62 days when we received one or more uh, severity one or severity two tickets. That is almost 68.89% days are severity non-compliance. What is the goal statement? To reduce severity non-compliance by 20% by May 2022. So we have a project scope, then team members, project timeline, and estimated savings of the project. Let me read it out. Based on the calculation of finance team, reduction in the effort spent on high severity ticket will save $5,574 per month, roughly USD $66,000 per year. This is 5574 into 12, that gives us 66,000 per year. This is about a project charter, which you and your team, you know, operations manager, assistant operations manager, and you know, senior members over there, you built it together, you developed it together, right? So let's go to next slide. Right, so you're continuing. Great, let's move to next step, understanding end-to-end -end process flow. I'm sure. We must be maintaining process flow chart uh, for the purpose of ISO or other uh, quality certification. Will you please share it, operations manager? Yes, give me five minutes. You, sure. Meanwhile, let's understand why do we need process map or process flow chart. In defined fit, we not only discuss what is the problem, but we also need to know where is the problem located in our day-to-day -day work activities. End-to-end -end process flow chart help us visualize the process, different steps of the project or process to and fro uh, flow of raw material and information in the process, different participants and departments associated in the process or with the process. In short, process flow chart provides visual understandings of where exactly problem lies in the process, kind of sensitizing with the location of the problem in the process. Now, operations manager, here we go. Uh, this is our latest process map approved by ISO auditor last month. You, excellent. Let's go to the next slide. All right, so this is what the you know, process flow chart shared by the uh, process manager and here the, you know you and your the team discuss about where we do have that severity non-compliance so that's about understanding end-to-end -end process workflow which help us to locate where exactly the pro problem lies in other words what process the given problem is associated with we have to have certain understanding of that particular process right this this particular uh, you know um, um, this particular process workflow or process map help us help us understand what exactly they do and what is the process what are different steps and where exactly the real problem lies so that's about step number three so let's go to next slide you. Does define phase mainly help us understand what and where exactly is the problem? Let's move to next phase, that is major phase, as name suggests. 
we measure something here. The question is, what do we measure? Let's look into it in our next episode. So what exactly do we measure? Let's dive deeper in it in our next episode of Measure. Until then, goodbye and do take care of yourself. And before we end today's episode, please let your friends, family, relatives, neighbors, and people within your network know about our Breath of Text initiative. And please do like the video, please uh, share it with, with everyone, and please do subscribe to our family's own Breath of Text YouTube channel. So on that note, Uttishta Bharata, Ma Bharati shall rise again in her full glory. And finally, Let's thank technology companies. We deeply appreciate following technology companies for their technological support. Thank you so very much for your time and let's meet up in our next episode.